What's going on, everybody, and good evening, and welcome to the Muzzle is Off podcast. I am your host, Nakia Monet, and we have some great, great, great people with us today on this podcast. We have Grace back with us. Hey. We have Tiffany with us. Hello. We got Focus with us. We have Corey with us. Dr. Corey Teague is with us. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. And we got my good, good girlfriend. We got Gail with us. Hey, everybody. So, as y'all know, tonight we are truly discovering purpose. And what we're doing with purpose is we are trying to take y'all on a good journey, right? Because everybody needs to understand that We are all here for a purpose. Um, There is not something uh, in this lifetime or in this world that we are not here to fulfill. Uh, We literally have the answer to something that someone needs, right? So our job is in order for us to be that answer, we need to discover our purpose. And that's why I said like for this month, we're going to really hone in on purpose because you know, 2020 has been a good rough year, right? It's been rough. Um, and if we're, if we're, if we're openly honest, we, we can definitely say that even, even prior to, uh, 2020, it's been rough, right? So with that roughness comes a certain point in time in your life where you just like, okay, what, what am I here for? What do I need to do? Um, why am I here? Um, I've been having failed relationships. My career is not going in the direction I wanted to go into. Uh, My personal life is not going in the direction I wanted to go into. So what am I here for? Why? And that's what we come in in here today, tonight, um, this month, in order to answer for you. Why are you here? And to give you some necessary tools um, that you can actually put into motion and put into action in order for you to literally hone in on why am I here? Because one of the biggest issues that I, I find that as men and women alike, um, we have issues in relationships because we don't know our purpose. Um, we don't know what we're here for. We have a, uh, a we, we have lost our identity, right? And we are literally in like some form of an identity crisis. And I believe that, and this is what um, Grace and I touched on last week, and we're going to go deeper into it this week, is that when you suffer from an identity crisis or an identity loss, um, you are no longer living in purpose. You are actually living on accident. Um, and the reason being I say it's on accident is because everything that you do is not defined. Identity defines you. So if you can't be defined, it's like you're literally living in a, in a place of unknown. And so everything that you touch, nothing really works the way you want it to work. Um, everything that you think, nothing really goes as planned. And it's just time out for all of that stuff. It's time out for living on accident. And it's time out. To, it's time to really and truly start living on purpose. So let's do it. Yeah, all right. All right. So I said a whole lot. <laughs> and that's why I got five of y'all up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's time. Now y'all go. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. It's conversation. I like I like conversation because I believe that it, it it brings in um it brings in a natural element of how we talk on a personal level, right? So let me say this: Has anybody on this panel struggled with discovering your purpose? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Even yeah, it's not moment. something that's taught. It's not a math or science in school. And most people don't have the spiritual being to know that there's an existence outside of just being existence. So we're just a privileged few that already know. So that's why we're here to, tonight to light it up, right? So that we can have them in the know. In the know, okay? Yeah. I like so, that. The know. In the know, okay? Because mm-hmm. folk got to know. No, so, no, let me, so let me start here. For myself, in order for me to... <laughs> In order for me to discover my purpose, I had to hit a place um, where I couldn't look nowhere, nowhere but up. Mm-hmm. Right? Anybody else? Yeah, I, In- I didn't go ahead. I didn't really even begin to start the journey to discovering my purpose, which I'm still on that journey until after I lost my actual 
day job and went into, you know, doing what I'm doing now as an activist. That's when I really found out. And I'm actually working, get, make more money now doing what I'm doing now, but I'm still trying to figure this thing out. There's still some pieces I'm still trying to put together. But after I lost my nine to five, that's when that journey really began. Cause I was pretty much just making, busting my behind, making somebody else rich. And I still couldn't figure out what, where I was supposed to fit in, in life. So it was, it was a tough, you know, tough road. And it's just starting now, ever since the pandemic hit, they had to lay people off. They started at the top. And that's when I had to really, it kind of, it's almost like life just kind of thrusted me into, you're going to figure this thing out or you're going to fall on your face until you do. Exactly. Exactly. And as Nikki said, hi, everybody. I'm focused from the focus of love. And I love love. I'm a relationship coach and I'm a life coach as well. And you are spot on, Corey. See, some people wake up and they know that they are a tree hugger. They know they're going to save the whales. That's their purpose, right? <laughs> but most people don't know that. It normally takes some kind of hurt and pain that they heal from. And on the other side of that healing is an aha moment. Remember in coming to America the, with the Jewish Italian guy in the barbershop? And he was like, aha, aha. <laughs> That's normally when we know our purpose. Life is just not that neat because our family and friends are not grooming us. Our community is not grooming us of living through purpose. It's just nine to five. I'm getting on what I get on, right? You know, I'm just living, I'm surviving all of these mantras that's actually suppressing the awesomeness of, inside of us, right? So it's passed on from generations to generations. But when we get squeezed and God start rubbing on us, right? That's what I like to call problems, troubles, and traumas. Once God start rubbing on us, right? And getting us shinied up so we can right. get close to him and be able to, to be a light to the world that's when we discover, you know, our purpose. Because when we get on the other side, we have a strategic way to tell other people how to get on the other side. And that births the purpose, hence why I'm a life coach. I, why I'm a, a coach that uh, loves love. I actually got married. I'm going to make this really quick. At 18, got married to a 21-year-old. We both love God. But Christians, hold on to your horses. Love and God ain't enough. I'm sorry. Don't I got your computer, but loving God ain't enough. <laughs> you need a intelligence, you need the ability to argue and fight fair and have some heated sex afterwards, right? But if you don't have those types of skills, it's going to be a lot of falling out. And I found myself four years into that marriage, maybe five, he became a pastor. His mom was a pastor and made him a uh, assistant pastor. I was a first lady living in a bubble. And unfortunately, this uh, pastor, he ended up cheating, which was my husband, cheated with our nanny, who also mm -hmm. was the armor of the church. The cleanup So woman. I was just devastated on so many levels, right? I uh, walked about 10 years feeling like I was a pit bull fight, right? <laughs> Telling anybody that would listen to that story, if you stood next to me in the gas station, you got that grace. Grace, I was telling you that story, girl, and you was going to shake your head and you was going to think like I was thinking, which church people ain't. Uh-huh. And men can't keep their finger in their pants, right? I was going to tell that story. But that, that that's that brokenness, right, that we all experience from some kind of betrayal, some kind of hurt in life. But on the other side of that, now I get to help people recognize that, you know what, that pain was there to teach you something, right? And if you don't heal the hurt, you will repeat the pain. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I love everything that Focus just said. Um I really believe with purpose is something that's revealed over time. Over time. Um, it goes by layers, you know? Yeah. So I really believe that your experiences is what reveals to you. So I, I never believe you wake up and wonder, okay, I know my purpose. I think right. you have to go through different experiences. And then as you said, God would go through different layers of you and show you who you truly are. Because as we discussed last week, Nikki and I was talking about identity and how our experiences can kind of shape how we see ourselves. And, you know, when you, as you said, heal from those things, then you can you can show people from a place of healing versus a place of dysfunction. Um, by profession, I'm a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. I'm also a transformational coach. So I do a lot of personal development stuff. So um, I'm in the same, I guess, arena as you are on focus. So I always tell people that you have to look inside yourself 
and pretty much get to the root of your experiences. If you want to find your purpose, get to the root of your experiences. How did those parents make you feel? Process through those things. And then you start, you start seeing more things about yourself to be able to help other people. Purpose is attached to a problem. If you want to find your purpose, find a problem. Something that's burning your heart. Corey said he's a, Dr. Corey said he's an activist, right? So that's something that burdens his heart. And that's why he does that, right? So our purpose is always attached to a problem. God created us to be problem solvers. There's a problem in this world that you were created to solve and only you can solve. So that's kind of like how you find your purpose. I found my purpose really, as you said, I went through a heartbreak. You know, I had to really get to rock bottom and have my world shifted upside down. Didn't know if I was coming or going. Really, if it wasn't for my son and me even going to graduate school, being involved in something and honestly, God's grace, <laughs> I don't think I'll be here right now. Honestly, that's how that relationship broke me down because that's all I really, truly knew, you know, you know, so he's the first man that actually saw me for me. And, you know, and we were together for such a long time. And that's what I gravitated to. So when that ripped up underneath me, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know what to think. I just kept going until I really had to sit down and look at myself and really take accountability to the choices I made. Because at the end of the day, I played a big part in that. And the things I have learned and the wisdom I have gained, now I can share with other women how they can elevate in their life, You know, whether it's their profession, their personal life, their relationships. So... I really believe that purpose is attached to a problem, but you have to get healed first because you don't want to be pouring dysfunction on the people. <laughs> so what you said, what you guys said makes all types of sense. So I'll go next. Um, I am on the path of um, just still discovering my purpose. Um, I am, I also, um, so just brief story is I've been dealing with my mental health for the past two and a half years. I'm like Grace. I am getting my bachelor's degree in psychology with a focus in ABA. Um, and so it actually it actually put me on this path of like, what is it that you truly want to do? And what I understand, my aha moment was this week and I wrote it on my Facebook page and I just have to bring it up so I can remember what it was. I said, I'm not chasing money, I'm chasing purpose. And when you walk in purpose, it brings money. It will bring satisfaction, peace and fulfillment. When you're chasing wealth and fame, it brings stress. Um, a lot of people chase up, Gail, I need, money. I need you to repeat they that. I gotta chase... write that down. Go on. <laughs> um, I'm not chasing money. I'm chasing purpose. When you walk in purpose, it will bring money. It will bring satisfaction, peace, and fulfillment. When you're chasing wealth and fame, it brings stress. Now, send that send that Facebook post to me. I had to learn that the hard way. Uh, <laughs> um, definitely therapy. Therapy is teaching me a lot of things, right? Um, and so what I've learned because I was like focus, I was like grace. I had a really bad breakup um, that literally almost took me under. Um, and prior to the breakup, let me say this. Prior to the breakup, because I love heart and God has given me this really big heart to exude love, um, me and my ex-girlfriend was walking across the street I get, we get hit by a four F-150 truck. In the process of us getting hit by this truck, um, walking across a shopping center, the truck pushes us in the middle of the street. And because I think I'm a superhero, 
I use all my strength to push the truck back so we don't fall on the ground into oncoming traffic. Well, what that did was three months later, I noticed that I couldn't walk a full city block here in Philadelphia, that literally my whole back was on fire when I started to walk. I went to the doctors. The doctors was like, um, let's put you in physical therapy. Two months into physical therapy, I went to get up from going to the bathroom, knee buckled, and totally lost my mobility. So now I was dealing with the realization that I cannot no longer move within this world the same way that I used to. That I am dependent on everyone to do everything for me. Literally, to get down the steps in my apartment, I was to butt scoot down the steps. I went from walking, from not being able to walk, to walking with crutches, to now permanently walking with a cane and permanently having some mobility issues. Um, and so during that process, um, my girlfriend at that time cheated on me. And in this process, she also um, left in the time that I needed someone the most. So could you imagine not only dealing with a broken heart, but also dealing with losing your independence all at the same time. What purpose do I have to live? Where I lost my hope. On top of that, very active in the church and live my life out loud as a lesbian. There is no qualms about that. Um, to have people we then. <laughs> hey, Kia, cut it out. Um, Just saying, not a one. <laughs> um, to have people then tell me, God will only heal you from your physical ailment when you come out of being a lesbian. That's what they said I was there. Okay. So now we're dealing with multi-layered of stuff. And so totally, I was walking through this world aimlessly like, God, well, what am I here for? And through the process of me trying to figure out what I'm here for, I figured out that I am a natural healer. That the words that I speak bring healing. That he has given me a level of, of wisdom. And no matter what nobody else says, that he has endowed me with the wisdom to help people get through stuff that they never thought that they would get through. <clears throat> and I did that through going to school, but also looking at all the trauma that I had experienced over my 38 years of life. Girl, you're so, 38? Yes. Wow. <laughs> um, and so I started to emerge this year in my purpose. And in that, he had me write out what will be my next steps in life. And at that time, I couldn't see it after the breakup. But I wrote out, and I was on the phone with Kia and a few other different people. And I wrote out this program that I want to do. It's very detailed. This is even before I got into school. And he gave me the vision way before I had the credentialing and knew where I was going next. So I agree with Grace that um, some type of pain, some type of tribulation, some type of something that has that that causes pressure in your life, if we talk it from a church standpoint, will bring the oil that will push you into purpose. How do you say that for a good regular person that ain't talking to church talk of life? 
<laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, as a practice with my clients, I ask them to write five things that really you know, that traumatized them in life, that was important to them in life. So it could be marriage, something good, or birth of a child. So five things that really rings in your life, kind of you still live by. It could be that third grade teacher that told you you were stupid. Now you got five degrees because you're still trying to prove them wrong. Right? Not living, that's still just existing. Right. So I'm glad you got the degrees. Namaste. Help as many people as you can. But we don't want to live from pain. We don't want to live from making people wrong. Right. So I asked them to write the five things down. And then the next step is that we want to separate the story from what we tell ourselves about the story. So for me, the story was my husband, pastor, cheated with our nanny, who also was the armor bearer of the church. But the story I've told myself about the story is that church people ain't Fill that in, guys. Praise the Lord. And then men, all men. See, that's the story I told myself about the story that was running the show. So even when good men were standing in front of me, all men cheat. So I was killing my own ability to love because I was blocked by my story. So that's the first thing. We got to separate the story from what, what had happened, right? And then you'll be able to see where what, what actually happened. You'll be able to also, but here's the trip. Here's the trip for all of us. You'll see where you came up short or where you could have grown or you could have done different. See, I know I wasn't a good wife. I was coming off of the basketball court. So I know I wasn't talking with reverence. Praise the Lord, Dr. Corey. I was talking with reverence. I, was still, I had two older brothers. We talked smack. They would mug me, push me down for any reason or no reason at all. I'm just mm-hmm. coming off of the basketball court. So I didn't have the reverence that, that he needed to have a wife. So it was easy for him to slide to the nanny because she's, you know, she's Bearing him, they're looking at him and like, ah. I'm like, that dude? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Right. You know what? It took me it took me five years. What what you just mentioned, it took me five years. I can say I wasted five years trying to prove some people wrong when I could have yeah. they've already, you know, one thing I learned about is that they've already moved on with their life and they're yeah. doing things with their life. Yeah. Why are you still trying to prove them wrong? Mm-hmm. Still trying they, to prove them wrong. They've forgotten about you years ago, yeah. and you're sure. still in a battle within yourself trying to prove them yes. wrong when they don't even they're not even thinking about you anymore. But and I feel like I'm, I'm still like going through this, like even to this day, like yeah. I feel like I I had to like really wrestle with demons. Like when Gail said, "I'm still kind of figuring out my purpose," me myself. I feel like I'm still trying to figure out my purpose. You know, um, I currently, I am seeking therapy. I'm going to a counselor right now because there's a lot of issues I had that were maybe unresolved since I was a girl that, like, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't popular. I was picked on, teased, called all types of horrible names. I didn't have any friends. And I think, you know, even to this day, that kind of still affects me. You know, and, I, and I'm big on social media. And a lot of times I'll be on social media and I do get kind of jealous when I see people click up with, oh, this is my day one. We've been friends since the sandbox. I'm like, I never had a best friend. And it's like, in terms of relationships, I've never had a healthy, happy relationship with a guy. And um, I remember on um, Focus, you had just said about, oh, all men cheat. And excuse my French, you know, but... I was on niggas ain't shit. Why is this person getting all this in a relationship? They're getting this, they're getting that. And I know I'm a good woman. I know I'm a good person. And I don't get that. I get these sorry men. Like that was really my mentality. I started, I'm gonna be honest, I started hating men. I really did. Cause I know I'm a good person. I knew what I brought. I know what I bring to the table, but it's like, why am I not getting that? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, do I look like I would attract bums? But that's what I allowed in my life. I think I had like, again, with the therapy, I think it's like a lot of childhood issues I'm still getting resolved. Like you said, proving people wrong. I feel like even to this day, I like, I'll show you I can be the popular one. I'll show you I can do this. I can fit in. I can do this. I really can. And I feel like I'm struggling with those demons to this day. That's why I'm in therapy. Not just for that, but for other other issues too. Um, I just feel like, you know, I, I want to know what is my purpose? A lot of times I walk around, God, why am I here? Why in the past, you know, have I been subject to a lot of ridicule? Why have I been a good person to other people, but I get smacked, like figuratively speaking? Why am I here? What is my purpose? So for the last few years, I've really been sitting down trying to, you know, pray and read my Bible and, you know, struggle and 
what is really my purpose? Like, why do I have these thoughts that I have? Like, like for example, I'm surrounded. I have a core group of, you know, good friends. They're teachers, you know, scholars, real estate agents. Um, they do so many good things. And I have a good job. I've been on my job for 13 years. I work in a pharmaceutical company. And um, it's like, okay, I work. I have a job. I'm making good pay. I got everything in my, in my name, you know, for the most part. I mean, I'm not perfect, but for the most part, I'm doing better than I was yesterday. But it's like, I feel like, I just feel like I could do more with my life. Like besides working and coming home and, you know, doing whatever, like, I feel like I could do more. And I feel like I'm surrounded by a bunch of great women. And uh, for example, one of my girlfriends, she just came out with a book, which I just received. And I read the whole thing this morning. It's a children's book. It's called Love Is Me. And I read it and it's like, see stuff like that, women empowering women. She's like everybody, I feel like people around me found their purpose and I feel like I'm still struggling to find mine. And that's okay because that's that's normal, right? It's, that, that's okay because that's very normal. Like it's not abnormal that you're still trying to discover and find your purpose because everybody doesn't find it at the same time. And that's part of the reason why I feel now that you're actually on this panel with us because I think that it is imperative that people begin to understand and people can see that just because I go to work does not mean that I've discovered my purpose. Just because I'm in a relationship does not mean I discovered my purpose. Just because I'm around a whole crowd of people does not mean that I discovered my purpose. But you already are living in your purpose because that's why your name is Sapphire. You understand what I'm saying? You live in your purpose because you literally exude exactly who you are. That's why your name also on Facebook, it says Sapphire Unique. You're a very unique person. You're a very articulate person. The way that you move and the way that you operate and the way that you have the ability to draw people people into you due to the fact that you have been hurt. So what happens is, is that because someone put in this comment section, you are what you attract. I do not agree with that. A lot of the times when you are a person that is an empath and a person that literally can feel the emotions of other people, the people in which that we attract are people that are very needy. They need us. So what happens is we get into relationships, even with men, even with our friends, even with, you know, different people around us, because we are empaths. We feel their emotions and then we also supply a need right and that's what you've been doing for so long you've been supplying needs to people while you are being left depleted right and you're still being left in yearning you're still being left in need you're still being left in want and you're not getting satisfaction nor are you being fulfilled because your energy what you exude out what you give out is you are a fulfiller so now what you have to do, Tiff, you have to sit back and be like, I will no longer be this fulfiller and I'm going to fulfill myself, right? And I'm going to hold all this stuff in for myself because now when the right person comes along and he begins to come alongside with me, I'm already going to be full. You cannot keep giving out of an empty basket. You understand what I'm saying? You may have to be filled up. And it's time for someone that's going to actually come into you and be like, you know what, Tiff? Don't worry about that. I got that. That would be nice. Tiff, Tiff don't no. got to pull out her wallet, right? Tiff don't yes. have to do this, that, and the third. Tiff going Tiff to need to sit back. But part of that comes into you discovering your own identity. And you know your identity. You actually should be writing a book, but you've been prolonging it because you keep thinking that you don't have the time. And you do have it because you have been waiting for at least about five years to do this. So it's about time that Tiffany stop putting everybody else on her shoulder and Tiffany show the home self. Put Tiffany on Tiffany's shoulder so that Tiffany can do what Tiffany can do for her own self and feel fulfilled in your own life. And then all that other extra stuff, you will see it. It will literally begin to fall off the wayside and you ain't going to be able to pick nothing back up. It'll just, fall. it'll all literally just fall. And I really truly believe that you started this whole entire process. And it wasn't the fact that niggas wasn't shit. It was the fact that the ones in which you were choosing wasn't shit. Yeah, it was. It's not all. Like I'm, I'm focused said, like, it's not. I know my friends even tell me all the time. And they'll talk to me till you know, they're blowing the face. It's not all men. And I'm, I'm perfectly It's not. It's just like you said, the ones I was picking. And, you know, they say, you know, give them a chance. Okay, I'll give them a chance. But like you said, I, I want somebody where it's going to be like, oh, you know what, Tiff, don't worry. I got it. Not, oh, Tiff, you know what I'm saying. Um, I need $25 to hold until next week. And it's like, okay, I'm making this amount of money. 
And then I'm like, it's nothing wrong. Cause I'm not saying you have to be a millionaire. I'm not a gold digger or, you know, nothing like that. So it's just like, you know, okay, why don't you have your stuff together? Like I've been relationships where I was the primary breadwinner and in the, re in the relationship, the one I just came out of, like, okay, I understand you got kids, child support, fine, you know, child support might hit some guys, you know, I don't care. You know, I'm not going to judge. Everybody goes through things with their baby mother, but I'm just tired of, you know, like just giving, giving, giving. Even when I was young, I would volunteer. I would just give, give, give. I was raised by my grandparents. They gave, gave it. They, it even extended to people that weren't even blood. They just gave. And that's what I grew up around. Are you ready, Tiffany? Are you ready, Tiffany? You want to know your purpose? Yeah. Are you ready? Now, but, yeah, I'm going to challenge you. You know, you know I love you. You already know that, right? And I care about it. So you can keep singing that song that you would give her, or you can teach people how to treat you. Because what you're doing is you're teaching them how to steal from you, how to steal your love, your money, your time, because you allow it. This is a gift I'm getting ready to give you. It's not out there. It's not another man. It's not another church. It's not another job. It ain't even another purpose. You are the denominator. So you get to say how much time you're going to give them. If a gentleman in your space asks you for $25, man, I'm a hustler. Let me buy you some socks. Let's get you a table. And you hit North Philly and you stand out there and sell them socks. Give me my 25 back and then get what you need to do, whatever you really are trying to do. So you you got to teach people how to treat, treat you. That's the first thing I want to say out loud to you, right? Because what we all want to do is have a victim mentality. See, I can't and I keep loving and only if they there is no they we get to say how people are going to treat us by participation and that should bring you joy because that means you ain't waiting for him to buy you you stand there when you walk up to Panera Bread you take you don't go all the way to the counter and you look at him and you smile and you go thank you honey and then you look straight ahead and you stand there and wait for him to pay it Right, so it's our feminine power. Am I right, brother Corey? Yeah, I was gonna mention, mention when you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, it's our please do. It's our feminine power to cause a man to be a man. But if you walk straight to the cash register just as fast as him, he like, oh, she got it. No, I, I don't have it. When the door, when we get right get to the door, I stop. I, I stop about two feet from the door and turn away from him, and he comes up. I do it at the wild wild. They ain't even my man, right? <laughs> you know. But it's your projection of who you are and people perceive, oh, she's a lady. I need to open the door for her, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the identity that Nikki said in the beginning, when you know who you are and absolutely you're attracting these type of people because they sniffing you out. They mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, she looked like she'll drop me $25, right? Mm -hmm. this, yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is the joy. I want you to get joy in this because once you know it, you can do something else about it. So really really quick if you did know now listen to the question if you did know what your purpose is what would be your purpose to to show people how to give love and to show people how to receive love oh yeah yeah and like, like what you just said one thing and i know it, it's been a pattern and it's something like i said i'm a work in progress and i always work on myself you know it's like oh um like me, I'll be the, for example, I'll be the type, I want to go to a concert, but the guy I'm with might not, Stop I know he's going to We're going back in the story again. Oh, Stay with that's me. What I Stay with you're going back in the story, you're going back in what had happened was. What is your purpose? To show love and receive love. You got it. So we, so, so here's the good thing about it. From how would you show people right now, just from today, how to show love and receive love? By just not allowing any old thing, by having creating boundaries, got to create boundaries. That's what I was just Thank about to boundaries. Yeah. And no, that's that's what I lacked was exactly. boundaries. But now that's what I'm you That's right. So right now, what would be a boundary? And I'm, I'm gonna give it right to you, Corey. We, we yeah. work out right here. Give us one second. So Tiffany, right now, what boundary do you want the audience members to walk away from with, right now? Because one, you already know your purpose. See, that's the 52 fake out. We want to keep figuring it out and I'm struggling. And if only if I knew, most of us already know, but we distract ourselves by doing a whole lot of other stuff and telling a lot of stories about what had happened 
Because if we actually sit still, then we gotta be responsible for our life. Mm. Scares most of the people. But if I just keep telling you why they're not treating me right, you know, and see, in my last relationship, and let me tell you how if people walked away from this event, you don't want them to know what is a juicy boundary that will give them the love they want and have the life they love. You would bet boundary be. And you're already in your purpose today. What would that be? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You were kind of fading in and out. Yeah, sorry about that. What is boundary? If people are listening to this on the replay and they walk away and say, that's a good boundary I can live by. That's a good boundary I can get juicy love through. That's a good boundary I can have a good life by living that boundary that Tiffany just dropped. What would be that boundary? Key thing, love yourself. You got to mm -hmm. love yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to love yourself. That's it. You just got to love yourself. Love yourself yeah. to want to do better and want better in your life. Uh-huh. And, what and I think that was that was missing. Like, I really felt I could say this and third. To be honest, I really felt like I didn't love myself the way I said or said I did or I should have, you know. But we're going to change all that. We fix all that. That's right. And how would you love yourself? You're almost done, Corey. And I'm going to jump it right back to you. How would you love yourself? Okay. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> That's all right. No, what I was going to say is, as people, with, with when you have a big heart, and I had to learn this, when you have a huge heart, especially my problem was my huge heart made it to where I needed everybody to accept me. So whatever yes. anybody asked me, I made sure I did it for them. People were asking me to co-sign for their cars yeah. and, and put my name on their lease and things of that nature because I just had to get. But you have to set the boundaries. You said it. I was trying to see if I could say it first, but you already said it. The <laughs> people that want to use you have no boundaries at all. So you have to basically tell them where they're at, point blank. Can can I jump in really quick? I want to jump in because I've heard a, I heard a lot of stuff. And so I operate from like five different minds. So guys, please <laughs> excuse me. So one thing I heard is you were talking, you were telling this story and focus is right. There is a story that we tell ourselves, which is a distortion. Um, and then there is the truth, right? And so, and, and, and many therapists, they'll tell you to change the negative self-talk that you're telling yourself. So what is the story that you keep on repeating to yourself is, which keep, is what keeps hindering you from getting to what your purpose is, right? That's the first thing. The other thing I thought about, because this is something that I had to do, who are you? How are you showing up? Who are you at the core of who you are? What is the authentic person who, who you are? right? And why are you scared to stand in that? Like, so I'll give you an example. For me, the fear was I hold position at church. People look at me as a leader. I can't be, you know, the, the, the conversation in the church is you can't be gay and love God. Um, you know, you can't be serving God and serving in the Lord's church and, and be gay and live that in an honest and true way, not in a way where you're being showing it off, but being proud of who you are. So what are the things that you are telling yourself that is stopping you from discovering, knowing, and walking in your purpose? Because that is the blockage that is stopping you right now, right? So that's one aspect of that. Now, if I go to my good masculine centered brain, um, which is another reason why Kia brought me on here. <laughs> if I go to my good masculine centered brain, so I am, I am masculine centered lesbian, right? So when I'm dating a woman, I want a very um, sophisticated brand of woman, if that makes sense, right? And so I am that guy, in this sense, I am that guy that would stop you at the door and say, uh-uh, don't you touch that door first. 
Like, let me get out the car first and open your door. Let me pull your chair out for you. And what I've experienced is that many women have not experienced that and doesn't know what that is. And so many times you have to be taught how to receive that. And so like Focus was saying, there are some things, there are some feminine energy that you give off that makes a man go, oh yeah, I got that. Honey, honey, I take that. Kia can tell you that in my relationships, my girlfriends never paid for anything. Nothing. Not a thing. Because you have to also encounter a person that knows what it means to teach a to treat a woman like a queen. I hope that all makes sense. Even if you don't know that you're supposed to be treated that way. But we're gonna know. We we we're gonna know. We're gonna um, know. But in the highest, in the highest level, you know, of regard. And sometimes I think that what happens is, is that when we are truly trying to discover our purpose, and we don't exactly know who we are, and we get lost within our own identity, and we fall into a um, identity crisis, we begin to accept things that we would not normally accept. And that is why I said. We have to start with the healing and the healing comes from the healing of the identity crisis that we have been in, in order to discover your purpose. You have to really and truly heal in your own identity, right? Because let's just be real, like, okay, for my own self, my own personal self, I wonder, someone that was is watching off of YouTube just said, how do you find your purpose? How did your guests define their purpose? How did they discover their purpose, right? I can only speak for myself and then y'all can truly speak for yourselves as well. But in order for me to discover my purpose, I first had to discover me. And I had to discover me in such a way to the point where I had to get real raw and real down with Nikia to say, this is who I am at the core of me in the essence of my being, who am I? And I had to find that. And when I found that, I found that on the other side of trauma, right? Because in the trauma, in the pain, I had to birth out something, literally birth out something that was going to push me into destiny. Purpose leads you into your destiny. How am I, you know, y'all know I love Beyonce, destiny fulfilled. Hello, hello, okay. What I'm saying is, but that's that, that, that right there in and out of itself is a very prophetic title of a good album, Destiny Fulfilled. Why? Because I had to discover my purpose in order to fulfill this good destiny. And we don't fully understand that healing, identity, purpose, Destiny, all this stuff is all tied together. And a lot of the times when we have, when we have to go through some type of psychological, some type of even sociological effect of finding who we are, because from birth, we have experienced a lot, period. Good, bad, or indifferent, you experience a lot from birth, okay? You grow up, you go through things, you see things, all these things that we experience, it literally shapes how we view the outside and how we also view the inner side, right? This, all it is. So what I see, how I see you walking down the street, how I see if a man disrespects my mother, how I see her react to that, how I see if my father disrespects my mother, how, how, what, how do I feel when that happens? You know, all these things that we go through in life literally shape us and it can either help us discover Discover our, our identity, or it can cause us to fall into an identity crisis. Okay, and a lot of the times we don't want to, we do not want to understand that we are in an identity crisis. Let me say this: I believe wholeheartedly, right? Because I had an ex, and I had an ex like Focus who cheated, right? Good old first lady of the church, Focus. I'm here with you with that. You feel me? I'm here. I'm there. Although the folks like to lie about it, but I got papers to prove I was married. Thank you. Um, and I literally went through an identity crisis because it was like that whole world shattered in one day. Everything came crashing down. And, 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 and me, I was like, but I'm a prayer warrior. 
I am this, I do that, I lead the women, I collect all the money for the church, I handle the church bank account, I handle this, I'm all, the, I'm all these things. And in one day, all of that was done. Mm. And I had to literally sit down and say, Nakia, who are you? And in them two, this was all like two years ago. And in them two years. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you ever, were you ever tempted after that to say, I'm going to just set, destroy that church? Being that you had all no. of the, you know what I'm saying? You had all the information, all the paperwork. You could actually destroy it. Did you ever no. feel tempted to that? that, that mm -mm, so, not no. at all. That's for, that's for the Lord to do. I, I don't have to type. That's for God to do. One, one of the things, I, one of the things I did not do, um, my thought process was not to destroy. My, my thought process was to build. And my thought process was to heal. After all of that happened, I literally formed my own church. A lot of people don't know this, but I literally formed my own church. Gail knows. And I literally had the people that were because they saw it and they were like, we're not going there. Like they, they were like, we're not going back there. And wherever you're at is where we're going to be. And I literally formed my own church, but I was too hurt to keep it going because I needed oh, okay. to heal. I needed to heal from what happened. And I knew that I could not sit up there and honestly stand before people and teach them and preach to them and do all those things and not be healed because it, it was venom. And, and I'm, I was real with myself about, about the venom because, you know, in That's my mind, a lot of pastors out there. It, yeah. Because listen, in Philly, every three boxes is a church. Everybody ain't been called. Every three boxes, everybody not been called. They didn't call themselves. They coming out of hurt. They coming out of pain. And I love what you said. I know what you said. Let God be God. Who are we? we can't get revenge like God gets revenge, if you want to say revenge. But God can teach the lesson far better than we can even think it. You can't even think what God can do when he wants to teach someone a lesson and grow them. But also, we want to really consider that for the most part, most people are doing the best they can do right where they stand. See, I recognize my husband cheated, not just for vindict this being vindictive. He was vulnerable and just as I was. He was only 28 and getting all this attention from all these women that he wasn't used to getting attention from. I wasn't the most supportive. So we got to having grace, understanding we all on this earth trying to figure it out. Now, is there some people that's vindictive and just out to hurt people? Absolutely. But in general, we're all just trying to figure it out. And when we pull that grace, when we pull the, that grace into the conversation, one, we're going to be able to forgive ourselves sooner about the way we participated. See, that's the struggle. When we can look ourselves in a mirror and say A, B, and C and forgive ourselves, it makes it so much easier to forgive the offender, right? Because we recognize the dance. We had a dance and a part in that too. See, I, I not only got married because I didn't want to sin, but I also wanted to get out of my mom's house. She was struggling with mental health issues. So I was like, do you want to marry me? And give me a house? Oh, I'm in. Right. So he was like, I'm out. I'm out of this craziness. Right. That's confronting. Who wants to admit that? That I also was using this man to escape my pain. But here's the thing, ladies and gents, if you don't heal the hurt, you will repeat the pain. You can lose the pounds, die your hair, move to another country. But there you are. There you are. You can do wherever you need, wherever you are. So it's imperative we start with the healing first and then purpose. And I love what you said. We discover it, but then we declare it, right? It doesn't fall upon us. You get to say what your purpose is and it's malleable. It changes with your life and it's an evolution. And if you read the book of our first lady, Obama, becoming, she shares how it kept changing for her as the evolution of who she is. So that's good news. So that this is not that somebody comes down and anoints you as, you get to call it out based off of your purpose. So we don't need to wait five years until pastors say, I'm supposed to be a pastor. I don't need pastor to tell me I need to be a preacher. I don't need pastor to tell me I need to be nothing. You can declare it because God gave you that declaration to determine where your life is going. He told Adam to name all of the animals. Surely you can name where you want your life to go. So we don't need to wait for anybody to make that declaration. You get to say, and Tiffany, you just declared it. So I can't wait. I'm going to check up on you. I want to hear what you're doing. Purpose, girlfriend. But you get to 
you tell people how to love and to receive love. You got it. Now it's just the discovery of it. And please continue therapy. Therapy is going to keep helping you to heal. And then that, that it's going to sharpen your ax on how to teach other people to do that uh, as well. Mm-hmm. And it took a lot for me to like admit, admit some of this stuff because like it really did like, you know, I got everybody seeing this, you know, some of my friends know certain things and there's certain, like I said, the whole, the past issues and, you know, we don't go in the past, but a lot of times the past sometimes can help shape to who you are. And I'm definitely going to walk in my purpose and, you know, not dwell so much on the past. And I think, and like you said, if you don't heal yourself from within, you're going to continue to repeat the same cycle. And I, I feel honestly, I haven't 100% fully healed from certain things. So until I, you know, want a secret relationship, I got to work on myself. You know what I'm saying? It's all about working on yourself and knowing your, when you said identity, to be honest, years ago, I, I really didn't know who I was because it was like, I wanted acceptance so much. I wanted to fit in so much. I was doing anything like, Tiffany, jump off a bridge. Tiffany, the sky's blue and I'll believe it. Tiffany, do this. Tiffany, say this. And I was just, ah, like, I just was everywhere trying to fit in and it just seemed like it didn't work and I was acting in a manner that wasn't me. And, you know, I'm not proud of the stuff I said and it did in the, in the past. I'm, I'm not going to go into detail, but, you know, I was just, I was trying to be a people pleaser, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm at a I'm at a place where you know what? I'm getting more comfortable. I'm more comfortable in my skin than I was. I'm happy with the person I'm becoming. And like I said, I'm a work in progress. And I feel like there's just more levels to go. It, it doesn't stop here. That's right. Tiffany, yeah. I just want to I just want to say commend you. Because mm. me working in mental health, I hear all kinds of stories. <laughs> you know, there's nothing I ain't I ain't heard. And I just want to commend you for even owning up your truth because it's not easy to do that. And when you own your truth, whether it's good, bad, and ugly, that's when you start discovering who you are. And that's how I started discovering who I was when I was able to own up to the good, bad, and ugly, not the not the grace that I wanted the world to see, but the true raw authentic mm -hmm. person. God had to show me that. And then I had to start taking accountability in the choices I made because at the end of the day, sorry, we have to take ownership of our choices. We have to take ownership of and take accountability of the decisions that we make. And then we reflect back on it, not that we um, harbor on it because your past is really a place for reference. It's not a place of residence. So you do go back and look at the decisions that you made, like, mm, what could I have done differently? What did I learn from that? Nikki and I was talking last week um, back to what um, Corey was saying about asking Nikki, did she ever think about getting revenge and all that stuff? And last week we were talking about leaving relationships, whatever it looks like, whatever situation you're in with integrity. OK, you have to leave those things with honor. You don't need to do revenge on anyone. You don't need to, you know, harbor on what this person should have, could have, would have did. You don't need to do all that. You know, you have to leave these situations with integrity and honor because at the end of the day, they serve their purpose in your life because of you getting rock bottom and going through all these things. Now you have a story. Now you have something to share and show people what you learned from how you overcome, overcame it. You Does that make sense? So don't ever live in your past as residents, but use it as a reference for you to reflect back. And I just want to encourage you and tell you, listen, healing is a lifetime per, a pr process. Wholeness, a none of us arrived. I'm telling you, Jesus exactly. can come down today. A none of us arrived. Okay, yeah. so wholeness is a lifetime process. No, You're gonna go through trauma all the time of your life. There's someone that's gonna say something bad about you, whether you're doing good or bad. Pe look, we're we're in 2020, 2020, right? All this stuff with Corona, people dying left and right, people losing their jobs, people didn't think any of this stuff could happen to them. We everyone goes through some level of trauma. It's always going to continue happen. So you're going to always continue healing the healing process. You can be healed from something else. Two weeks later, something's going to happen that you need to heal from. That's just life, later right? On <laughs> but but you but you take ownership of that and take ownership of your healing process. So ain't nothing wrong with going to therapy. Ain't nothing wrong with continue to um heal. Ain't nothing wrong like listen. I ain't got it. I ain't got it all. That's cool. Because I used to be that way, always want to show people I got it, I got it together. But inside, I was crying inside. Inside, I was a hot mess.com. 
You know what I mean? But I didn't want people to see the vulnerable piece of me. I didn't want people to see yeah. that tra be transparent. I didn't want people like, okay, Grace definitely ain't got it all. You know, so it's that perfectionist mindset. And it's based in, by, based on insecurity, right? That's what it's really based on. That's the root is insecurity. So we want, we present ourselves one way, but that's not who we truly are. When you show up for the people who are listening, when you show up in your authentic self, your true self and who you really was created to be, that's when you're going to discover your purpose. But when you continue being fake, and I'm not talking about you, I'm just saying in general, when you when you continue being fake and want to please everybody, want to improve people, accept you for this and accept you for that, let me tell you something, whether you're doing good or bad, people going to have something to say. You might as yep. well show up as your true self. <laughs> you might as well show up as your true self. So when you start showing up as your true self and not worrying about what everybody should have, could have said about you, because in the day, they are not the father. They are not the savior. They did not create you. Okay? So when you show up as your true self, that's when you're going to discover your identity, and that's when you discover your purpose, and that's when you discover your destiny, as Nakia said. Okay? I just preached yeah, the whole thing. Something. I hope y'all go yeah. on. Amen. Amen. You said something <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to commend you and encourage you, sis. Continue going forward. Just continue going thank forward. You, you thank got you. this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And like you said about the um the whole thing about like how you know your husband's spouse they cheated on you, and when you walk away, and oh my goodness, now I'm at a point where if the relationship and I could I might talk lower, but I walk away because before pss, what. Now, I don't want to, I want to just walk away with some type of dignity. I don't want to burn the house down and pop up at the house and do crazy stuff. I want to, I just want peace. Like, I feel like, like you said about being accepted, people are going to talk about you, whether you do good, whether you do bad, I might as well be myself. And like I said, to people will come up to be like, Tiff, you seem so well put together. You're so nice and sweet and innocent and you're this and you're this. And I know I appear that way, but deep down, Sometimes I'm not always right. I have insecurities. I have doubts. I have fears. And I just, one thing I told, told myself, I wanted to be more open-minded. I wanted to be more transparent. I wanted to be more, you know, you know, just, well, like I said, like just more transparent and open-minded and vulnerable, you know, to people that think, hey, I'm just like you. Like, you know, I'm not, I don't have all the answers. I'm not 100% together, but I'm better than, like I said, I'm better than I am yesterday. So I'm just going to continue to strive, you know, for perfection to the best of my abilities. And, you know, I'm glad that I was able to says, It ain't about perfection. It's about progression. As long as you progress, that's all that matters. Okay. Let me tell you something. I haven't always been like this. I, I do have a big personality. That's just how God created me. And I, I, do, I do not apologize for that because that's who I am. However, I haven't always been peaceful. I haven't always wanted to go the other way. You know what I mean? I had clap back for days. Okay? Clap back for days. You tell me one, I'm going to give you three. You know what I'm saying? But that stuff came from hurt. That stuff came from unforgiveness. You know, that stuff came from my dysfunctional relationship with my father. I had to heal from that. Forgive him, release him, and now our relationship is a lot better. So I a lot of that came from, from my mom. Anger, you know, it was really the grace of God that got me to a place like grace. You don't have to be like that in order to get your needs met. You ain't got to clap back all the time. You ain't got to have something else to say. Silence actually is... <laughs> Pete, it takes a lot of strength to walk away to be, from a man. Let me tell you, go off with somebody. So meekness is not a weakness, and I keep telling people that. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you just gotta zip it. You know, you sometimes you just gotta close mm -hmm. your mouth and let and let it be. You know what I mean? Set boundaries with people. Sh let people know which line they shouldn't cross. Obviously, you don't want to be a, a, a doormat. But at the same token, it ain't got to be all of that. You ain't got to be doing, uh, uh, uh. you don't got to do all that with people. There's people who can step in a room and not say anything and their presence speaks for them. And that's how you got to carry yourself. You don't want to be carrying yourself, doing all that rah, rah, rah stuff. The loudest person in the room does not always win the arguments. That's just facts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got to be strategic when you deal with people. I'm laughing because that was our our family's mantra when we were growing up. Whoever's the loudest wins, right? So our, what you're describing is our upbringing, right? Because we're going to need healing from our upbringing because everybody's just trying to do the best they can, guys. 
for okay. everybody that's listening, honestly, you know, we, we can sit here and try to out trauma each other, right? <laughs> but out traumatize each other, but it's always somebody else who's been through something else. And also, I, 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 I focus, yeah, can I interrupt you right there? Because cause that is a pet mm -hmm. peeve of mine when we say that there's always somebody out there who has it out worse than what we have, than what we are experienced, because that is kind of what we would call minimization so let me you of our own the, trauma. The complete understanding, and it's so the complete understanding wait, wait, wait. of that is to own your situation and deal with your situation. So what I'm saying is, instead of everybody in the audience and in our minds always thinking, but only if you knew what I went through. And what I'm suggesting is, no, your trauma is your depth of your trauma. So no matter how much you think I can mm -hmm. say to top yours, we all been traumatized. So it doesn't normalize it or minimalize it. It's called being human. So this way we don't feel like, well, only if you knew what I went through, then you wouldn't understand. We all been through something because that doesn't give you a trophy or a minimize somebody else's. What it gives us is an aha moment is welcome to being human. Because at some point, this is going to be hard for some people to hear, but at some point, it's all called now what? Now what? Because if we keep living from that pain and hurt, it causes you to suffer in silence, allowing you not to fulfill your purpose. So for those that was needed to hear your voice to get that breakthrough, they don't get to hear your voice. So yes, you in pain. Yes, he cheated. Yes, you've been molested. Yes, you lost a baby, a house and a car. I've been through all of that. And what I'm suggesting is someone else can probably add five more things to that, plus what I just said. But at some point, we got to stop and pump the brakes, deal with that hurt, like Nikita said, heal the hurt so we don't repeat the pain and give birth to that thing called purpose, or we're just going to keep repeating the cycle. That's and I, and, I, to That's and I, I, totally, I, I totally understand what you're, where you're coming from, but a lot of times from a social construct place, right? Mm -hmm. That when people start to acknowledge, talk about what they went through, the thing, the place that we go to is that there are many other people out here dealing with far worse than what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And that can also cause a negative impact on the person that is either acknowledging what they are experiencing. Because one thing I know for sure is that another reason why we live in silence is because we were not taught how to acknowledge and sit in our feelings and be okay with that. Yes. Another yes. thing I noticed is that we only have, or we can only recognize five to 10 different emotions and we don't also know that we can have two opposing emotions all at the same time. So I can be happy and sad all at the same time. I can be happy that a situation has stopped, but I also can be grieving the relationship all at the same time. That's true. Okay, so I, I, that's why I brought up the point of minimalization. It's gotcha. because for so long, we have been living in a world when Kia was talking about identity, that everybody was telling us how to feel, when to feel, how to think, when to think. And we have never developed this thing called critical thinking skills, um, especially for generations after us. We actually had to take a class called critical thinking. When I was in college, I had a critical thinking class to teach you how to critically think. I had a class where when you read the book, you comprehend, but they asked you, well, what are you getting from this, right? And so many times, as Ayana Van Zandt says, we're operating from here down and we're not feeling here. I just said to my therapist um, the other day, it's, it's not until I start feeling that I'm living. While I am not feeling, I am, I am uh, 
I'm a dead man walking. In ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis, we have something called the dead man's test. And if a dead man can't, if a dead man can do it, you can't describe the behavior, right? And so if I'm walking around dead from the neck down, how am I experiencing life? Period. You're not. But I and think so. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'll let you finish your thought. Go ahead. <laughs> so I think I understand what you're saying, but we have to give people safe spaces to experience these feelings and these emotions and kind of take a deep dive into them and dive into their past so they can get to their future and live the life that they want to live. And I agree with that. And I also think that um, keeping in line with the same thought and the topic of discovering purpose, I don't want anybody to get lost in what we're actually talking about because we're going in a lot of different places, but where we're actually going is the process and how you truly do discover your purpose. What we're talking about right now is when you literally have a individual Right. And, and and Tiffany just happens to be our good individual. I love you, girl. Um, but because she was so honest and because she was so open within her own self and within her own um, struggles, we can we can openly now begin to take you through a process of how you discover purpose. And that's what the pro th this right here, honestly, is what it looks like. Right. Because you might have your core five. You feel what I'm saying? And your core five will sit down and say, okay, how did that make you feel? Where did you want to go when that happened? Did you want to shrink? Did you want to, what did you want? You know, because you have to be open and honest enough with your feelings and your emotions in order to say, did that make me happy? Did it make me sad? Did it hurt? Did it make me want to cry? Did it make me want to punch? Did it make me want to kick? What did that right there make you want to do? And then you got to step through it, right? which is why Gail is talking about literally sitting in the feeling, sitting in the emotion. What, when this happened, how did that make me feel? Because now I got to step through it, right? The key to every, the key to healing in order to discover your identity is for you to feel in the emotion of what you were going through. But now I got to walk through it, not to stay there, but I got to walk. It's like a journey and the journey to purpose all leads you through healing, healing of old, healing of, everything from the past. You understand what I'm saying? And some, some things we don't even necessarily remember, but it will come up as a trigger. Right. And then mm -hmm. it's like, okay, why did that, like, you could literally be walking down the street. Somebody could say something to you and you're like, wait a minute, why did that hurt me? Why did that right there hurt me? Why did that word hurt me? And now because that word became a trigger. So now I got to deal with this trigger. And now we're going to step right through that. Everything that we do in this life, we literally have to step through it in order to discover our purpose, right? When I had to go through my good healing process, I literally had to heal the good five-year-old Nakia that completely felt disappointed by every single man that came into her life, whether it was my biological father, whether it was my dad that raised me, whether it was an uncle, whether it was who, whomever it was, Nakia said, okay, I need to chalk, I'm just summarizing, I got to chalk this stuff up right? The chalk up process wasn't easy because I had to sit through the emotion of what they did to cause me to feel some type of way all the way down into relationships, right? I literally had to process through Nakia. Have you ever truly felt loved by any man? Forget father. Have you felt loved by any man that you were in a romantic relationship with? Absolutely not. And I had to process with how did that make me feel? feel? How did it make me feel to come to the realization that I was being used? Right. And no, Nakia is very different with how Nakia processes through things because Nakia does not say, well, Nakia, you allowed it. No, Nakia says it was something that happened because I battled rejection. So I could care less if you didn't show me love. I can care less as long as you didn't reject me. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference with all of this stuff. So I had to process through not feeling rejected, 
right? Because a lot of my emotions was tied to a feeling of rejection, a feeling of abandonment, a feeling of you're going to leave me. So I need to hover over you. Oh, you know what? You need $20 here. Oh, you need $100 here. Oh, you need these sneakers here. Oh, you need a place to stay here. Come lay your head on my pillow. Oh, what, what you need? Oh, you need some water. Oh, I got that. Don't even worry. You ain't got to go nowhere for that water because my water is the water of thirst. Listen here. I am like the woman. <laughs> that, hello. I am like that woman that did good well, huh? You will not thirst again once you drink of this you water. This water. Hello. There yeah. is no, there's no thirst no more, boo. Okay. And that's how I was living. I was living as if I was truly this living water and the living water was running dry. And according to that good word, the word tells me that that water don't run dry because it keeps you craving for more. And these niggas didn't want no more because they'd be like, I'm done with you. Now, Friends would be like, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. Some of them good church folk. I'm done with you. I'm done with you. But Nikki yes. is the living well. What you needed money, I got you. What you needed a place to crash, I got you. What you needed a shower, I had you. Oh, you needed a place to stay. You needed a ride. Do you want to take my car? Cause you know what, I got gas in it, and you know what, I pay my insurance, and you know what, and my car no good. You want to use that? Tiff, I know, I know this very well, right? So my whole thing is I literally had to process through everything that Nakia had in here about who? Nakia. It wasn't about nobody else. It was truly about how did I view myself? A lot of us struggle with our identity because we do not know who we are because we have not identified how I view me. I tell every woman that ever has a good, I am not a certified life coach. Let me put that out there right now, but I do mentor women. It's just, it's a natural, it's a natural given ability that I have. And what I tell before we start talking, I'll be like, write out yourself view. Cause it's imperative mm -hmm. that you know, how do you view yourself? What do you, what them thoughts that be right It'd be like back there somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It'd be back there. Those thoughts, how you view you. And I want you to write them all out too. And sometimes that is one of the toughest things that anyone can ever do, which is write out how they view themselves. And then I flip it. Because once they write that out and we go through their good self view, I'm like, now tell me how God views you. How do you feel God views you? Because nine times out of 10, those two views don't line up. They don't even, they don't match. Nine to, if a person's being real honest with themselves and they are real, they tell deep down, you know what? Sometimes I feel like I'm trash. Sometimes I feel I'm unworthy. Sometimes I feel like I'm not even deserving of love. Sometimes, and then, you know, other days I feel great. I feel like I'm a wonderful person. But you know what? Some days I really think I can be very mean. You know, I can be standoffish. You got to be honest with yourself about yourself. And you got to be real with yourself about you. And then you got to say, okay, but now how does, how does God view me? How, how does God view me as a person, right? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, that view is going to be totally different. And sometimes, right, some people literally think God views them how they view themselves. Mm -hmm. And that right there is the problem. And that is the key. The key is, is that mm -hmm. to discover identity, you need to discover mm -hmm. how you view yourself. How do I value me? Like, listen, we had, we did this pot, we did an impromptu podcast last night, Lord help me. And <laughs> we did, we did the, the good video. With the, with the man and the woman and how she rated herself a five. I say, ain't no way on this earth, earth, uh, I hope y'all write that down, earth, is Nakia ever going to view Nakia as a five? You hear me? Mm -hmm. Ain't not never. Now, there was a point in time when Nakia might have rated herself a two. Being honest, right? A two. But Nakia did her good soul work and her soul searching work. And Nakia found out, huh, what ain't no scale for me. What you ask me? What, how I, do you not know the God that I serve that said I am above and not beneath? I don't care what or not. There ain't no number that could count. Listen, they ain't got no scale, okay? Yeah, like what 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 the um what you gonna call it say in 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 it, that one little rap song he said he said um he said you're gonna have to use the scales they weigh the whales with listen that's ton listen hello what I am not you, 
-hmm. is on your little minimal scale, one to 10, sir, please. Okay. And let me put my good face on. Okay. Listen here. I'm up in them raptors somewhere like the Sopranos when they sing super high. I'm over there. I'm high soprano over there somewhere in the, that's, that's it. And I had to, and it took time to get there. I ain't even gonna lie. It took time to get there. It took, even with my good strudges, y'all see it in the edges, they don't be there. They coming back though, they trying. With them good strudges, I had to literally find my, comp. when I saw my edges coming out, I was like, oh my God, wait a minute, uh-uh, uh-uh, that is ugly. And I had to find it within myself, right? And be like, so what if I got strudges? Some of y'all bull. I'm just saying, that's a joke. No laugh but i'm just saying you know what i'm saying <laughs> those are things like strudges we be bored some people is not and at the same time it's all right everybody got it but there's no skill that you should ever act like you're not maximizing yes okay go ahead corey because you've been trying right. to for like <laughs> I mean, and, 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 you know and, and here's another thing i'm glad you know with us with us discussing purpose man i got to tell you there's still a level of bitterness that I have after this pandemic hit, you know, you lost your position, but the strange thing about it is how, how do I have bitterness about a position where I was making less money? I'm in a position now where I'm making more, but I'm bitter because of that position. I think, I think one of the reasons is because in that position, people are actually paid to have to listen to me talk. When I came in at the head of the table, now, as an activist, I could talk, but people, not everybody has to listen. They can turn their back. But I don't know if it's just a pride issue. When I was in that job, I was in the front of the room. I was able to command their attention. I don't know what it is, but there's a bitterness that lingers from losing that position. And I don't understand why that bitterness is there. I'm not sure. I don't know why. I got you did a great job this time by self-evaluating. Yeah. yeah, of course you had you had a passive audience, right? And this goes right back to the Nakia share, which is knowing ourselves, right? Just really sit still, listen to our heart. And I'm mean, here to say, you know, I had a captive audience. I felt like the man. I felt powerful. I felt when I spoke, people listen. Here, they have an option to or not, right? So you're more vulnerable because you get to speak, but doesn't mean it's received equally, yeah. right? So you can definitely, you know, hear that. Uh, is that what I'm hearing you say? Is that where I hear some of the struggle is? That yeah, that's, have a that's probably where it's at. Because I know when I go to events and speak, you know, some people may listen, some people may keep walking. But in my previous position, they had, they were, and I'm sure they, some people probably didn't want to hear then. But it was almost like they had to be there and they had to be in that meeting and they had to listen and respond. Whereas if you're at a rally, people are just walking yeah. right on by. You stand there with a bullhorn, yeah. and there's there's probably people there, but people are walking by. Where in the yeah. previous position, they sure. couldn't walk by. They had to come in at a certain time, sit, listen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. So there's six um, human needs that we all have, and they rank in different places. And one of them is significance. And now you're missing what's called significance. And this is where. A lot for those that are in relationship, this is what COVID also tried a lot of relationships where men and women lost their jobs and couldn't fulfill their normal duties and uh, making payments and so forth. It caused a lot of tension in the family because the person now missed significance in their position. Mm -hmm. And this is what education having a therapist, because I have one and I have a coach. So I think it's important when I'm buying my house, I up to my appointments to my therapist and my life coach. When you're making major life decisions and you're going through things, you need to have the village around you that's educated and has expertise in being able to support to walk you through it. So all, not all, not to minimize it, but what you're longing for is significance and it's so okay. So now it's for you to decide, how do I discover fulfilling significance in a different way? Job isn't is no longer there, so you're just longing for it, right? You're like, hey, where, where did that go? You know, it's something missing here that used to make me feel more powerful, and it's called significance. Mm -hmm. I also heard validation, which is part of you know, yeah. which is the significance that she said. You actually in the same arena, you're doing the same thing. But I think the reason why you're trying to compare the two is because of that validation that you're seeking. But if you understand that it doesn't matter what who the audience is, because the gift is you. You know what I'm saying? So the gift is you. It ain't it doesn't matter how the audience reacts to it. 
So I think that's where the validation is coming from. And that's why you probably feel in that struggle, right? Because you're doing the same thing. You know, it's just in a different, just a different atmosphere. Um, as Focus has said, I have a coach, I have a personal development coach and a business coach. I'm believing getting mentors. I, I have a mentor. I have a mentor too. I just, in fact, I just talked to her two days ago. You know, I have a community of circle of women um, that two, two, two of them that hold me accountable. They support me. My sister circle. We all, we both, we all three of us are like-minded, chasing after purpose. We all love the Lord. <laughs> we, we are super lit for God. <laughs> you know, so I have that community. I have my mentor. I have a coach. So it's important about, it's, it's very good. It doesn't matter. Just find yourself a community of people who are going to support you and also hold you accountable. Because a lot of times we, we, we want cheerleaders, people that can cheer us on, which is nothing wrong with that. But you also need people that are going to hold you accountable to your becoming process. You don't want a bunch of yes people around you because guess what they're going to do? They're going to see you putting your hand to fire and tell you to go ahead. All right. That's not what you want. You want people who can see the blind spots that you're not going to be able to see. You want people to call you out, let you know, like, listen, Corey, this ain't the way to go, bruh. This ain't the way to go. This is let's try this instead. You know, you want people that you can be open and vulnerable with. You could be your authentic self and they won't shame you. They won't judge you. You don't want none of that. You got enough of that going on in the world where people judging people, shaming people. We don't need that. Right. So I think that's kind of like what you what you probably struggling in. And if you don't have a community, I really highly recommend people are listening. Get a community. It doesn't have to be 10 or million people. It's just a few people that you can, you know, have that can really show you who talk to you, support you, and hold you accountable in your in your process. And that's what's helped me. Really getting a community that's focused on it. And that's right. And I am the, the accountable community. Like my friend, my sister, Leah, just put in them good comments. She was like, sister friends, listen, that's what we call it. We sister friends. That's what we got. And we hold each other up and accountable on all things. Okay. I think we. So, Corey, I think, where do you see that you can step in? Oh, I'm sorry. Someone was speaking. Go ahead. I, I think it's very important that we talk about community. Um, Corey, but what else I hear is that you are transitioning and transition never feels good, right? And so you are now finding your footing in a new arena, even though you're doing the same thing, you're finding your footing. And the Bible states better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof, right? And so you're entering the beginning of something. Um, and so you just have to be aware that in the beginning, we don't always get it all right. And we're going to have some uncomfortable parts, but also in the Bible, it talks about us being stretched in the book of Isaiah. Um, he talks about stretching us. And so you are being stretched. And if you know anything about a woman having a baby, um, when she starts to show after the third trimester or so, her body starts to stretch and she starts to be very uncomfortable. Kia was talking about this earlier about birthing a pur purpose. So you are in the process of birthing through and walking through the purpose and you're being stretched. So now that's why it's not more so bitterness, it's the un un being uncomfortable. And that's where I went back to talking about that we can only identify certain emotions and we don't identify others. So we will say this is bitterness, not knowing that this is uncomfortability. Okay. Okay. And so um, I, my suggestion to you is to get something called the feelings will. Google it online. Um, the feelings will helps me a lot. I may say, oh, I'm depressed. I gotta put but then it mind. breaks off to... Um, other different feelings and emotions that falls under that same umbrella. You want to identify exactly where you're at. I think the, the other thing will? that we, the feelings will. Okay. Um, I think the other thing that we have to acknowledge is that purpose, life is the journey to get you to purpose. Um, and we have to realize if we talk from a biblical standpoint, 
David was on a journey to his purpose way before he was anointed king. He was in the field tending to the sheep. Him tending to the sheep prepared him to be king. Mm. If we think about Joseph, Joseph was in the in the uh, in the jail. He was in the palace way before he became second into command to be able to uh, be able to govern over people. Mm. Um, I think the other thing is that God takes us through a series of lessons. Let me breathe through this. God takes me through a series of lessons to change our behavior. True. We have to go through a behavior modification process. Mm -hmm. The Bible speaks of in Psalms 51 um, that we were shaping in, iniqui in iniquity. Yeah. And so we are all born into sin. And sometimes we have to have our behaviors modified because of the things that we have learned and have been taught does not line up with the purpose that he has set us here on earth. And mm. so it's a lot of breaking that we go through. True. And, and so, but you learn these things in the journey of the process of getting to purpose and destiny. I hope all that made That's sense. So good, yeah. That's so good. Listen, I just want to say, I hope people are really following what is what really going on yeah. here. We are literally taking you through the mm -hmm. steps of healing and discovering purpose. These are steps. And Corey, you, I want you to be able to provide your feedback based on what Gail said. But then after that, I want to jump to focus because focus, I want you to um, give the information, number one, for your giveaway. Mm. Number two, for, uh, well, you have, you actually, it's, it's two giveaways. So, but also the information with regards to um, where you're speaking at next. So go ahead, Corey. I want you, I would definitely want you to provide, you know, your insight and your feedback based on what Gail just stated, based on what everybody just stated, everybody. And then I want to jump into focus and uh, let focus do her giveaways and also just give her the, the information. I've seen you put it in the comments. I've put it up there on the screen and everything, but you know, then we'll go back to put it back up there on the screen and then we'll go back to what we're doing. Cause y'all journeying. And I thank y'all for journeying with us. Cause we want a journey right now. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, tonight was an eye opener for for myself. Wait, is this this is on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, all that. Okay, yeah, because I want there's some people that need to see this, and I want to make sure I got the link so I can make sure I send it to them. Uh, yeah, tonight was an extreme eye opener, and you know, because I had to really learn. First, first thing I think I really learned through this this year 2020 was to stop taking life for granted for one thing because i was the type of person every day i leave work and not to just not no self-gratification but i leave work go to the old steakhouse uh in the meat packing district in manhattan you have one of those you know expensive burgers you know you feel like you're just there and you don't really take the time to think about the small things in life that could easily change and now you're at burger king getting getting a, a, a sandwich out of Burger King when you're so used to being going to a steakhouse. And and something like that may seem simple, but it really is a, a huge uh what's the phrase I'm trying to find? Quantum leap. That's that's what it is. The quantum leap is what really changes you. And but I learned today though that there's a lot of uh, introspection that we have to do with ourselves, even in the process of trying to uh get to where we want to be. And that's another thing. Sometimes where we want to be is not where God really wants us to be. And, you know, speaking about myself, and I, you know, and I think you've seen it on my, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see I'm very open about who I am and the things that I like and what I like to do. A lot of times it gets me in trouble, but, but one of the things I learned tonight is that I have to refocus. Um, not, that I, not that I feel like I'm completely off, but if I really want to get to understanding what my purpose is, I got to refocus some things. And I think just in that few moments, y'all really helped me to understand that my focus was kind of off, you know, and looking at the crowd and 
saying that, you know, the, the, the crowd that I had in front of me that had to sit there and listen versus having to, you know, get the, not, not even get the attention of the crowd, but to have to speak while people are just walking by, it's also a humbling experience. It's almost like saying, look, you know, it's almost like God saying in life saying, like, you know, no matter how gifted you may be, you still have to bring yourself to a point of humility because you can easily be brought down in a heartbeat and brought to a place because I'm not used to being the, um, I'm not used to being the guy that stands on the soapbox, but I think God is using this through what you all have told me. I've been listening. And through what you all have said, it's saying God is using this this particular time to humble me and to make me realize that only what I do for him is what's going to really last and what really what's, what's really going to matter. So there's a lot of stuff that I have to look at myself now and look in the mirror and check some things about myself. Because people think that, you know, that mental health is an issue, but ego is also, uh, ego is a, is, is, is a pandemic in and of itself. Because ego will make you think you're walking on water when you're sinking. And you'll still feel in your mind, you're underwater and you still feel like you're walking on water and you're sinking. So tonight, that's why, while you all were talking, I was sitting there saying to myself, Okay, Corey, I got to get myself together. This ego trip has to end. This this excessive, you know, haughtiness of thinking that you're on top of the world. I'm not saying it's not okay to to appreciate who you are, but when you get to a point where you try to minimize other people and just kind of make yourself seem like you're grandstanding, which I I used to do a lot. I don't have no problem saying that. I guess I guess this is probably God's way of saying, look, man, you got to bring it down a notch. And, and and humble yourself and get yourself in a place where when I do use you, you don't try to take the credit for it, but you give me the credit for it. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I've gotten from, from just hearing what y'all are saying tonight. And of course, what I mentioned to the sister there, man, like I said, we have to, we have to set boundaries because people who like to use people have no boundaries. And I can't even begin to tell you how much I lost giving people stuff because I felt like in giving them stuff, I was earning their love and their respect when they weren't earning nothing from them. They didn't care about me, but I felt like if I gave them something that that would in return, I would be able to receive something back from them. And there's really no law. Even when we look at the law of reciprocity, it doesn't apply to people. If you give somebody something, you gave it to them. That doesn't mean they're going to give it back to you. If it comes back, it may come back in other ways, but sometimes where I was at, I wanted to be accepted by a specific person I would roll out the red carpet and wait for them to come walking up. And when they never showed up, I would be wondering what happened. After I gave them everything, they took what they had and moved on. So I, I, I guess when you have a big heart and you want to be there for everybody, you have to set certain guidelines and limits. And I'm going to tell you, when I, when I started setting limits and guidelines, I lost a lot of friends or people who I thought were friends. I lost a lot of contacts, people who I thought were contacts. But in the process, I kind of gained my identity. What y'all talking about tonight? And, and, and you know what? It wasn't it wasn't pretty because I wasn't able to draw the crowds I used to. I was the guy who used to go to the parties, used to pay for everybody's drinks, used to pay for everybody's food because I wanted the the the, the gratification. I wanted everybody to, you know, to hail me. But I had to realize that wasn't doing. People that were laughing at these parties were not hailing me. They were laughing at me for being an idiot. And, 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 and paying for everybody's stuff. But I had to learn within myself that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to give everything you have away to people to be accepted. Those who accept you will accept you whether you have or not, or no matter who you are. If they really love you and accept you, they're going to accept you without you having to take out everything you have and give it to them. So, I mean, I learned a lot tonight about myself and the fact that, you know, I really have to do a, um, do a self-inspection. And there's some things that I got to clear up within my own heart and mind in terms of, like I said, the ego, I got to, I got to change that. I got to get that straight. And I'm glad I was on here tonight. I'm glad I got the invitation because I needed to hear this. And probably if I didn't hear this tonight, I would still probably be on that, you know, destructive road of, of egotism. But being that I was here tonight and I heard the words that you all spoke, it kind of cleared up a lot of things for me. So I appreciate that. That's wonderful. And I really appreciate your openness and your honesty and you know what I'm saying? And, and your humility, because it takes a lot to admit that. And I, I want to um, encourage you in that. We're going to jump to focus. I'm going to mute everybody just so that um, we can hear focus. I'm going to mute everybody. 
including myself. I'm going on mute too because I need to hear. I need, can I be a partaker of the gift? I'm just saying, fine, not okay, it's fine. Um, we're gonna jump to focus right now. Hey, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us. You guys have been in here for a good 90 minutes. You already got a therapeutic and a coaching session right now. So absolutely, first of all, like and share this podcast, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are viewing it, because you do want to co grow your village and you want people to grow with you and have them come back. Because you see, this is where the power at having these kind of distinctive conversations. And thank you, Nikita, for inviting me and providing a space for people to actually grow. So what I'm sharing today is I'm doing a giveaway. It's called What is the Focus of Love? I actually wrote this book in 90 days. I flew to Chicago to get certified as a public speaker. And for those that know Les Brown, who know Les Brown? Anybody in here, you guys know Les Brown? So he was there as one of the teachers and he said, Focus, your story is so powerful. You gotta put it in writing so people can take it home with them. So when a millionaire tell you to do something, you do it, right? So I got to writing and I wrote this book in 90 days with two other people who I met there. I had them to be my running partner, Nikita, like you said, they were my accountability partners asking me how much I got done that I do the, the, to the cover. So this is about 20 years of experience as a, as a life coach, as a human being, as a mom, as a, a first lady, just sharing the essence of the power of communication. See, the way you think, the way you utilize words creates your world, and it means everything, right? So we got to connect the two. So I'm going to give this away. So we have a couple of different venues. So you can just message me right here at Focus James on Facebook. I'm also at The Focus of Love on YouTube. And you can go, I saw you on The Muzzle Off, uh, the Muzzle Off podcast, and I would like my free book. And I'm going to send you an ebook as a result of it. And when I send you the ebook with your email, so drop the email, you get a 30 minute session with me. So just you and I busting it up, talking about it. How many miss they big mamas down the street? You now you had a big mama down the street, you can go sit on her stoop and you can just tell her all your business, right? And, and you and she just, yes, baby, I understand, darling. And then she get you the one liner, right? She get you the one liner, right? You know, well, if he loved you, he wouldn't have hit you now, would he? Now I hit you because I love you. But we gotta ask ourselves, is he hitting me because he loved you, right? <laughs> you know, they give you the one line and you in the you in the shower three days later and you just get it. You're like, oh right. Well, I want to be your big mama. I want you to be able to come in on in the room, sit on the couch, let's talk it out, let's get the clarity that you need. Because when you get clarity, you get peace. And when you get peace, you get the ability to declare your purpose. It don't need to take 10 years like it did me. Because I didn't have the guidance. I didn't have someone having the emotional intelligence to walk me through that pain. But you just experienced it right here with these six people being able to pour into you. And I want to take that 30 minutes, right? So that's the book. Now, also this Friday, this Friday, I'm speaking at this is full circle. Two years later, now I'm on the same stage with the multimillionaires, several multimillionaires. And I'm actually kicking off the event. It's about 25 people speaking Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm going to give two tickets free. I'm going to give two tickets free. The value is almost $1,000. And I'm going to give two tickets free. So we can do a draw right now. If you want to drop a number, I'm going to think of a number. If you want to drop a number, I'm going to think of a number from 1 to 20. Drop it in the comments for everybody that's listening. The, the number I, I'm going to pick, those two people get to win. And you get to join me on Friday. I start speaking at 11.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but the whole week is jam-packed. And you'll see, you'll get to hear Les Brown. You'll get to hear Sharon Lecter, who helped the gentleman wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. Who heard of him? Anybody hear that? Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She helped him write all 12 of his books. We have uh, uh, Brian Tracy, which wrote uh, Eat That Frog, which helped us organize, right? Don't overdo ourselves. So it's a jam-packed weekend, and I'm going to give two free tickets. So, Nikita, if you can tell me, I see somebody dropping their number, and I'm going to look on Facebook, too, because I don't want anybody. Yeah, I can see uh, Leah commented. She wrote her number there. I feel like she should be the first one since she's the first one who wrote a good number. She wrote 17. Okay. All right. Got you. Got you. So I, I'm going to go with the leader here. So, Leah... So message me at Focus. Now, where she's at? She's in YouTube or Facebook? She's on Facebook. Oh, wonderful. So message me at Focus James and go, I won. 
<laughs> I won, and I will definitely set you up with your um, with your free ticket that you'll get. And who else do you see you would love to bless this with? Anybody else that dropped the number in there? And I'm looking on Facebook too. See, nope, folks sleeping and y'all watching. <laughs> I, I mean, you got to drop a good number. Got to drop a good number. So here's the other option I'm gonna give you if you're listening on the replay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Chantel, Chantel, okay. 25. Come All on, right. here. Five is my favorite number. So there you go. So we have the two people. So message me, or if you have their email, Nikita, definitely you can forward it to me as well. Right? Will um, do. Okay, so we get your email and I'll give that to you. Now, when you win that ticket, you also get a 30 minute session with me. So whatever, I'm a certified life coach, every area of life from business to soup to nuts. And we can take the time and tease out something powerful for you for that um, 30 minutes as well. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is my plum, please. This is why I know I breathe to be able to speak life into other people. And I'm very clear on that. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity. I got to give a shout out to my girl, Gail. She radically changed my life a couple of years ago. She kept telling me about this company I would want to work for. And I couldn't hear her because there was too much pain. And she left and was gone. And six months later, I reached back out to her. She said, I'm trying to tell you, Focus, you would love this job. And then I was able to hear her at that point because of the healing process and got the job and enjoyed it for seven years. So I thank you, Gail, for always being instrumental in my life. And then she messaged me and said, listen, this podcast, you would love it. And now I'm here. So thanks, Gail. I really appreciate you speaking in my life and giving me multiple opportunities, love. Most definitely. You are so welcome. That is what I do. Um, I have a couple of things that I want to say really quick. Um, I do. Uh, I love to network people with other people um, and get them together, especially when I see that they can we are more powerful together than we are apart. Um, and so that is one of the things I have lived by, um, that we are more together, we are more together than we are apart. Um, I wanted to say a few things. I need to go back to Corey. Kia knows I will lose my train of thought if I don't get certain things out. So I heard Corey say a whole bunch of things and one of the things I wanted to pinpoint real quick, I am, so I want to let you guys know, I am always thinking from a psychological standpoint. So my answers will be very much in tune to that field. Um, I, sometimes I don't know how to cut it off. So my apologies. But what I heard you say when you was talking about you being a giver and people taking from you and different things like that. What it reminded me of, and I say this very often, is that a lot of times we operate from a deficit and we don't even realize that we're operating from a deficit. So there is someone by the name of, um, Manslow is his last name. I can't think of his first name. Um, but he has the hierarchy of needs. And Grace is laughing at me because she knows exactly I mean, what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I know, I know that. <laughs> and so there are different levels in, in Manslow. And what we, what we don't realize is that validation is a very important key. And a lot of times we are told that we don't need validation from outside. However, one of the ways that we build our self-esteem and self-identity and self-awareness is from what we see from the outside is how we observe the world from our own eyes and our experiences and things. And if, if you live in an environment that is not safe, that doesn't validate who you are, then that gives you or, or becomes a negative impact on your self-worth, your self-identity and who you are. So we've been talking a lot about identity and a lot of times we don't realize that we operate from a point of deficit. And so we, our needs are not getting met and we are giving, giving, giving to other people so we can get our needs met. So I give you this, so now you're gonna come here and meet my need. 
And then, so we need to find, that's why community and support systems are very, very important so we can get poured into from other people to meet the need. Many times we put the needs into one person, like one, like our significant other should meet this need and somebody else should meet this need. You know, we don't do somebody else should meet the need. We just do significant other or mommy should meet the need. But we have to kind of create a community that will meet different parts of the need. So I know me being somebody that's queer, African-American, um, but I'm also, Kia, what we call it, saposexual? Oh, God. <laughs> Apiosexual. Yes, Gail. You know, I, I had to have Kia pronounce it because she knows me and the pronunciation of words is not, not See, the it, You already messed up <laughs> pronunciation. You're about to have me say pronunciate like that's the word. You know what? I'm going back on mute. I can't. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I also need to be stimulated from a very intellectual standpoint. And so also understanding how you are stimulated, not in reference to a sexual way, but just how you are stimulated that pushes you into your purpose. Does that make sense? Okay, I am done, I promise. And we blessed him. You know what? <laughs> Let me say this. I love this podcast because we will talk and we will talk and we will talk and we will talk and we will talk. Everybody going to get healed on the Muzzle Is Up podcast. You hear what I'm saying? Whether I'm cracking a good Enjoy. joke because I am funny. I don't be trying to be, but I be funny sometimes. I laugh at my own self. But I believe that it is imperative that we have the, this, this level of conversation and impart this level of wisdom into people because a lot of us were stuck. And what better way? For me to live out my purpose by helping you to become unstuck. That's why this is called the Muzzle is Off podcast. It's not just for me to pop off because I can and we know this, but it literally is because, which is why I need to get this, this intro video back up, right? Because the reason why that intro video was made the way it was, if people actually paid attention to it, it was very symbolic. We place muzzles on our own selves on our mind, on our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do, we muzzle it. And the only way how you're going to truly discover your purpose is if you remove it. That's why you got to take it off. You have to take the limitations even off of yourself. You have to take the limitations off of your mind. You have to even take the limitations off of your words. Sometimes even when we use limited speech, you're limiting yourself. You're muzzling yourself. And we have to learn how to literally expand beyond where we are at. How do I get beyond this point? And that's why we are here. That's why I talk about a lot of the things that make people very uncomfortable. Um, I, 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 Nakia Monet, am a Christian, but I am very much so aware that everyone is not, right? So I have to reach everyone, not just one targeted group. So therefore, when I speak, I'm going to speak in such a way that it's going to capture everybody, not just one group, right? And we have to learn how to maneuver like that because, I mean, hell, I literally had somebody literally go off with me in my good inbox right after a podcast because I said something in light and then delete me. I said, how are you going to go off and then delete? Like, you should at least have the balls. Yeah. To stand in what you said, mm -hmm. but you didn't want me to say nothing. I really wasn't going to say anything anyway because I could care less, right? But it's the point that you then block. I said, "What? Oh, I, I pissed you off that bad." Oh, okay, mm -hmm. but the reason being is because I live out this purpose every day, and I don't care. And I need everybody to get to the point where you want to live out your purpose to the point where you don't care about the naysayers. Mm -hmm. It's not about other people's agreement. It's not about other people's acceptance. Who you are at your core is going to piss some people off. And that's all right. I am a great pisser offer. 
and I'm okay with That's that. That's a good Facebook post. Mm -hmm. Don't get her started. Don't, don't let her have. She's going to hashtag that. Hashtag <laughs> Leah, because I know you're still watching. Hashtag I'm a great pizza offer. Okay. Hashtag. Mm -hmm. okay? And the reason being it is because you can't be afraid. One of the things to unlocking your purpose is no fear. Can't have fear because you cannot fear who you are. And for a long time, I feared it, right? And I'm being honest, I feared it. I, thank you, Leah. I am a great piss off. Of, hello. Uh, that's, that's my sister friend. They, they rocks with me. Um, I feared who I was. I feared who I am. The key is a dreamer. I have visions and they come to me in dreams. It comes to me. I could just be standing. If anybody, if you see me and I'm staring nine times out of 10, I'm not just staring because I just want to stare. I'm staring because I'm seeing something and I run from that. I run from that. And I had to literally tell the good Lord today, okay, I ain't gonna run from that no more. Okay, fine. I'm not, I, because I literally wanted to shut off my dreams, which is why for months I was not sleeping because I didn't want, I didn't want to dream. Right. And a lot of the times when we run from our purpose and we run from who we are, it's going to keep you up all night long until you accept who you are. Period. I don't care what realm you walking around in okay i don't care i've been a tried that's why i moved a lot before running and people used to tell me like stop moving you're moving too much stop changing your number you're doing this you're doing that and a lot of it was because i was running and we can't afford anymore to run nor can we afford to continue to live a lifestyle of people pleasing i am a great pisser offer and the difference is, and I, you know, there are people that do it to antagonize you. I don't do it to antagonize anybody. I do it because it's just who I am and you just might not like it. And that's okay. If my presence disrupts or disturbs you that bad, then that's between you and your emotions as it relates to my presence. You understand what I'm saying? And I think that a lot of times us as a people, we fail to understand that. So we run from even our own selves. We run from our own presence. We run from our own thoughts. We just be running and we can't do that no more. We can't afford to do that anymore. Now is the time to literally stand in your truth of who you are and walk in the purpose of whom God has created you to be. OK, and that's why I said I wanted to really and truly hone in on this discovering purpose. You cannot go into 2021 without starting the process of discovering who you are. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to go back to you, Tiff, because you named just uh, number one. Let me say this. I am a person. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a definition person. I like definitions because I believe that um, who we are is defined by how we were named. Right. That's that's who we are. Who we are is truly defined by our name. So I'm going to tell you, and I don't know if you've ever looked up the meaning of your name, but the meaning of the name Appearance Tiffany of a God. Manifestation yes. of God, right? Yes. Then you went further with your naming convention, right? Because then you began to call yourself Sapphire. What's the definition of Sapphire? A beautiful gem. It goes deeper than that. So one of the things about Sapphires is that they're very durable. And this is part of the reason why you have endured so much because you're very durable. And you've been trying to wonder why haven't I broken under this endurance, but it's because of how you were created and what you were created to be. So you're in your level of endurance, your level of durability. It's like as much as you wanted to break, all you could do is bend a little. And as much as it hurt, you still couldn't break. And as much as you felt like you were breaking, God was like, no, no. I am manifested within you because you're, that, that is what your name represents. So therefore, I had to build you in such a way that you're going to withstand the test of time and you're going to withstand the storms that literally came into your life to truly distract you and cause your mind even to be a little scattered, right? Because a lot of times your mind races. So you be thinking about 15 different things all at the same time. And what? that right there is to cause confusion, right? So in order for you to calm all of that down, you feel like you got anxiety, like, oh my God, I just feel so anxious. I gotta go do this, I gotta go do that. No, no, 
you have to learn the art of true meditation and the art of calming down even your mind and breathe, right? A lot of meditation form comes in the form of breathing, breathe in, breathe out. That is part of the reason why I got this new tattoo that says inhale, right? The past. But when you exhale, you exhale in the future. The future is what is to come, right? So I'm inhaling it and I got to push out. That's one of the things that you have to learn how to do because if you don't, you're going to crack. And the more you crack, the more you begin to have leakages, which is why you've been giving out so much, right? So I give, I give, I give. You're giving out of cracks. You're not even giving out of the wholeness of you. You're giving out of pieces. I give, I give, I give. So now you have to be refilled, right? Because the truth of the matter is, is that the usefulness of you and the reason why people are so drawn to you is because you're very encouraging and because of your faithfulness and because of your loyalty, sapphire, that's sapphires, faithfulness, encouraging, loyalty. It's who you are at the core of you. That's who you are. So therefore, if you're going to operate like that, that's why I was very happy when you said what your purpose was. Because when I looked up Sapphire, I said, now this is matching up. She knows who she is. Now she has to execute it. I have to show people I am going to be the self-help. This is who I'm going to be. Sapphire Unique is going to be self-help. I'm going to be the self-help person and I'm going to create a, a, a manual that is going to show you how to what give and receive love. And how am I going to do that? Because out of the neglect that I have felt, I now know how to show it, right? Out of the abandonment I have felt, I now know how to receive it. So therefore I'm going to create this is why I focus. I love when you said, when you said conversation, it creates. I have been a, I'm a person that tells people that in order for you to speak, if you want to speak to me, understand that you are speaking into me, into Nakia, and therefore it shall create something. So if you speak down to me, it's going to create a negativity that I don't want. But if you speak positively to me, it is going to lift me up and build me up and it's going to help me and shape my entire environment. So Tiffany, I'm going to tell you, now is a time for you to really and truly disconnect from those things and those people that speak negatively to you, about you, towards you, that bring a lot of negative energy into you because that is what is going to be used in order to destroy the environment around you and it's going to break apart your ability to create what you need to create. If I am here, my purpose is to teach people how to what receive love and show love. If I allow negative energy around me, that is going to deter my purpose. I can't allow that anymore, right? So now is the time for you to truly walk in the manifestation of your name and who you are. If I am the manifestation of God, that means that when I walk in the room, everything changes. Everything around me changes. I command things to change. When God said, let there be, that's conversation. And it was conversation creates. We have to understand what we are actually doing with our words, which is why I'm happy you're here. Because now you're going to begin to change what's been going on around you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be able to literally hone in on Tiffany. You're going to hone in on Sapphire. Sapphire, you're going to hone in on that and begin to birth out purpose because now the identity is here. Your identity has come because you came on a good podcast and we had Grace and we had Focus and we had Corey and we had Gail and then we had a Tiffany and Tiffany said, you know what? I got to I got to open this up now. Because Tiffany said, I'm ready to heal. I can't, I can no longer stay where I was at. I can't be angry anymore. I don't want to even hurt no more. I don't want to feel the pain no more. I don't want to feel disappointed anymore. I don't want to feel even the disruption. You've been disrupted. And you're like, I don't even want to feel that anymore. Things have just been shaking all around me. And it's trying to literally cause me to fall off and knock me off. And Tiff was like, nah, we ain't doing that today. And let me say this to you, Corey, as well. One of the biggest things that we oftentimes, especially those of us that have been hurt, is that we mask that hurt with an over uh, oversized ego, right? We mask hurt. That's what we do. We mask it. So I've been hurt. So therefore, I got to pump up, right? And I love everything that you said today. And I'm so happy that you came on here and that 
all of the wisdom and all of the love that we can literally pour out that you were able to receive it. So you're like, you know what? Wow. Okay. I got to take a step back. And what I will say is, is that the future is very bright and the future is very great. Right. And I think that what you just said today just shifted some things in your own career to where you're actually going. Because if you did not, the platform was literally going to, it wasn't going to stand, right? Because we can't build a platform on, fault, on, on false grounds. We can't build a platform based on ego. We can't build a platform based on pride. We can't build a platform based on, you know, being bitter. We can't build a platform based on being angry. We can't build it. And all of that really and truly was, 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 was mask and hurt. It was hurt, right? So now we have to say, in order, we got to clear out all of that stuff. And now when you stand before these people, let me tell you something. It's going to be magical and it's going to be magical for the simple fact that the words in which you are going to release them to the people, people are literally going to follow because they know that you have the answer for them and you have the answer for their problem. And they know that you actually have the compassion to do what others would not do. There have been a lot of people that have stood up and told the people, I am for you. I am with you and I'm going to do this. And they have not done a damn thing, but pump them up with a whole bunch of nonsense and not deliver. You will deliver. And you're going to go much further than what you actually think. I see that. I see that politically you're going to go further because you now accepted the charge of humility and of humbleness and of true meekness and of true mildness. That's what you do. That's that. I'm done. I can't no more. I'm over it. I love all of y'all. <laughs> I love y'all. I really do. Is the off from play, man? <laughs> okay. I'm just writing all these notes. What is it? Oh, look. You see my good? I said, let me get my paper. Okay. I said, let me get my paper. Okay. It, it, was, it went better, a lot better than I thought. I said, oh my God, I'm going to get ripped to shreds in a room full of black sisters. I, was, I thought I was doing nah, this it. Is, oh, no. <laughs> this is a safe platform. Let me tell you something. We believe in men Listen. speaking. So we, we want to be a safe place for you to be able to be. I believe in that. Stuff, I believe so. let the men speak. I told y'all I'm about to do, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring this out. I'm figuring out a platform for men uh, to come on because I really want, I want to open this up even for, even last night we had the good men folk up on here and I loved it. Uh, I loved it. And I think that I'll do, I want to do a panel like this, but literally with all men. So y'all men get up on this good uh, panel uh, because we do want to hear from y'all. We do want to talk to y'all. We do want to um, literally hear what y'all have to say, because I think sometimes like Grace, sometimes we, we, <laughs> we try to muzzle the mouth of in the thoughts of men and no, let them speak. Yeah. Let them tell the truth. I think, I think this was, one of the most amazing podcasts, y'all don't understand, I get drawn into this thing. Um, I really don't get, like, y'all probably get prior notification. I get a phone call the day of two hours before and be like, um, I need you to get on this podcast. Um, and one of the things that, like, I'll text Kia mid mid podcast. I'd be like, I don't think I'm I'm able to stand with these people. I don't think I I got enough to stand with these people. And so what I've learned during these podcasts is and I'm still talking about purpose is that um you'll get to a point where your purpose stops you stop chasing your purpose and your purpose starts chasing you. Um and and that's where I'm at now, because every time I say to Kia, like, uh, I don't know if I can stand with these people. She'd be like, I'm telling you, you got it like you got it, you know, but I like that. I have that feeling because as she was saying, that keeps me humble um, and know that I don't stand within myself to be able to say the things. Most of the things I have to go back and watch the replay because God is literally downloading in me at that point that I'm talking. So I am literally not speaking of myself, but literally speaking of God. And so when you open yourself up to God in those ways, 
to literally have him download what he wants you to say at that present moment in time, that's how you realize and you know for sure you're walking in your purpose. Who's writing a manuscript? One of y'all supposed to be writing a manuscript. Now, now, now. Anyway. Well, I'm definitely going to... You're not ready to vote my book, so... <laughs> do, I, do, I have your, do I have your permission to clip? Because I'm going to take some of these clips and repost them. Yeah. And listen to what's being what was said to me tonight, because a lot of this... A lot, there's some people texting me saying, we told you, you know, and these are people that you never met. But when they told me, I didn't want to hear it. I was like, please. I was getting on the subway going about my business. Wow. There is a manuscript. And Grace, you have another book you're supposed to write. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I didn't write. I didn't want to write the first one. Okay. That was a struggle. I, just, I had. I literally myself. wrote it down on my good piece of paper, and I believe Focus has a manuscript, but it's all right. But I wrote it down somewhere or right there, so that y'all know I ain't playing around because I wrote it. So. Yeah, you're spot on. I absolutely have my next book in my mind. I actually wrote off the chapters, so namaste. You are right on, and I'm right on. I do have another book, but... Y'all not going to have me out here feeling crazy. <laughs> That's why I That's why I smiled when like you said it. Was but... spot on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I literally <laughs> sat here and wrote this thing down. I was like, hold up. What that say right there? Grace book focus oh, yeah. manuscript. Okay. <laughs> I, I was like, uh-uh. Something. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I write. Y'all think I'll be playing. I'll be sitting here. I listen. I pay very close attention. However, this is what this is why we here. Because purpose. Purpose. And Tiffany, I'm going to help you because I work with a publisher and we're going to get you connected with our community um, and get you pushed in the direction that you need to go in so that you will truly hone in and 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 um and and birth out what you have. It's too much locked up on the inside of you. Um and we gotta get you out there and we're gonna do it because this is what we're here for. We we support our own and um we encourage our own, we uplift our own and we take we take care of our own. And this is what this this is what the sisterhood look and the brotherhood come with for me um is about and um uh, again look at Betty Betty one here commenting Betty better come again daughter on here commenting go ahead Betty I see I see you you know yeah, that that is that is my biggest accomplishment. I have a daughter that's 23 that has graduated with her bachelor's in communication. Right. Um right. and is doing her thing. And it is awesome to see um that's another level of my purpose. It's awesome to see um when she starts to speak. She doesn't get on things quite often. Um she plays the background a lot. Um, but one thing I've learned over my course of my years is what I pour into my baby when I'm not uh, when I'm not around, I have to trust that God will allow her to reach back to those things that I poured into her and that she will be able to use those things to further her in her purpose. Um and so if you have children and you're wondering how to get and navigate your children to their purpose, believe that God has put or allowed you to put everything in them that they need, that when you're not around, they will reach back to what you have put and what he has poured into them and that they will use it to navigate through life. And with that, let me tell y'all, um, next week, Focus will be back with us next week. Yes. Ew, yes. Um, y'all know I'm silly. And it's, it's, if y'all learned anything, I said last night on the podcast, uh, after 9 p.m., my mind goes over there somewhere. So 
That's why we're about to end it now. Um, <laughs> but Focus will be back with us next week. And we're still continuing in the conversation of discovering your purpose. And once again, we're going to hone in on identity. We're going to hone in on healing. And then we're going to take it a step further. And we're going to hone in on relationships. Um, because I believe that it is imperative that you have to learn how to relate to people mm. in purpose. Yeah. Everybody yes, is not meant to be in your purpose. Mm. Mm. And everybody ain't for your purpose. True. So now we have to get into all of that. And that's exactly what we're going to do um, next week. What date is that? Y'all know, told you on my mind. Next week is the what? Um, I forgot. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, next week is the 16th. <laughs> then after that, on the 23rd, me, me and Grace will be back with y'all on a good 23rd. And then on the 30th, which would be right before this, you know, a couple days before this new year, a couple days before my birthday, and mm. um, and um, we're gonna we're gonna do something a little different. Um, we're gonna do it, it's gonna be kind of like that get it off your chest Wednesday, but this time it's gonna be me and my girl Kay Brown, and we're gonna do um 2020 year in review. And I don't think y'all understand me and Kay are a fool, Kimberly Brown. No, K Brown, but um, we are going to give a review of 2020 on the good December 30th. Okay, and y'all, I'm telling you, we we do it um, a little different here. Um, and I like what we're doing. I like how we flow, and um, we're gonna keep the flow like that. So next week, which will be the 16th, focus will be back at 7 p.m. and we're gonna hone in on this relationship. 23rd, me and Grace going to be back. And depending upon where we go next week is how we're going to pick it up. Because we might we might start telling y'all some good horror story, relational horror stories and how we and how we discover purpose to them. You never know what we're going to do. Yeah, to get this off. It really flows with how the conversations go, which is why like last week when we stopped, we stopped with identity. I said, okay, so this week we're going to pick it up. We got to deal with identity as it relates to healing and finding purpose. And then next week we can get into the relational aspect of it. And then the week after that, we figure all of that out depending upon how next week flows. But then on that good 30th, we're giving you the year 2020 in review. That's what we're doing. That's where we at. So, oh, but Kit, woo, but Kit you, know you did help me out. I thank you, though, for helping me out about my neighbor. I went and got some Bose earphones that took care of that. I had to thank you for that. I don't even want to know. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell y'all. Let me, let me say this, okay, because I'm going way off topic since he done brought it up. Some of y'all snorers. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all live in apartments. And you're disrespectful to everybody that live around you. Yeah. Uh huh. And Who we got him? his neighbor. <laughs> he said his neighbor was snoring so loud he thought it was a man. <laughs> Listen, mm -hmm. it is disrespectful <laughs> for you to snore that loud and not forewarn people of what is going down. Okay? Yeah. People got to buy earplugs and headphones and all this mm -hmm. other noise, noise cancelling mm -hmm. to get a peaceful rest. Ah, the devil is a lie. Right. Mm -hmm. Go to a sleep study, okay? Sleep mm -hmm. at the club, okay? I'm telling you. That's what it's called. Go get your mm -hmm. sleep study. They got a whole brand new machine. Hey, listen, let me say this, because when I was I listen, I listen I, machine, that's I thought, what you mean. But I was I was good three hundred pounds, and I had sleep at the club, and I didn't know it. And my sister was like, "Oh my God, I don't want to share a room with you." We was like, "What?" Oh was saying at our grandmother's house time for like a holiday or something like that. She was like, "So y'all gonna really make me sleep down here?" I was like, "Don't do me." She was like, "You snore." I was like, "I do." And let me tell you. And when I got that sleep study, they were like, uh, "Ma'am, you stop sleeping. You stop sleeping like this many times." I was like, "What?" I could die. Y'all didn't tell me that being fat caused me to die. So at the end of the day. I had the CPAP machine. They don't even have it like that no more. They got it real indiscreet now. A little thing up in the nostrils and stuff like that. Help you breathe. You know what I'm saying? So everybody around you, including your neighbors, ain't got to hear you. Mm -hmm. Sounding like a Mac truck. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, Mack trucks need to be Mack trucks outside. We don't need the money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So therefore, see, look at that. PSA for sleep apnea and machines that help you breathe at night. I'm trying to tell people. People need to pay me for my wealth of knowledge. Okay? Yeah. Girl, you were bringing the knowledge. Last week, wasn't the American Cancer Society the squad? Hello. I mean, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Over here squatting and stuff. Hurting my good legs for the American Cancer Society. You know what I'm saying? 50 squats a day. They talk, listen, and when you sign up in your good uh, inbox, they're like, oh, you did 50, so now you owe us 5,000 50 squats. You'd be like, man, I didn't, uh, so you know what I did. Hey. I canceled those good notifications. Don't tell me how many squats I owe you. Leave me alone. I'm gonna squat on my own time, okay? I so, had, so I had to make up and do 200 in one day. I was mad. so Kia. I I think while we on like a different topic right now, we also want to tell the people look out on your notifications because Kia likes to do this thing called after dark, and so <laughs> and so here you get the good. You get the good. This is very, very like therapeutic. After dark, I'm going to tell y'all now, and we do for after dark. We are not. Uh, we are. We're due for after dark. <laughs> after dark, if you. After dark, if you not grown, don't hop on. After dark, I promise you. If you and Jesus is best friends. Don't hop on this idea. good old after no. dark. Some ones that Jesus is the best friend they need after dark. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it'll help free you. <laughs> God invented sex. Yeah, I was checking my ID, make sure I was old enough. I can get on there. <laughs> I'm done. I'm but done. I love, I love y'all. We will definitely be back next week with focus because I do. I definitely I want to I really, really, really want to hear about this weekend and I can't wait to hear about it next week. Uh, I am so happy for Leah and Chantel for winning uh, the good free tickets. Y'all better tell me about it, too. We want to hear a report about what's going down, all the knowledge that y'all about to be imparted and all this other extra stuff. You know, we want to hear about all of that. Go ahead, focus. I can't leave the host out. So I sent you complimentary ticket to you got the link so you can register as well. Yes. <laughs> yes, I sent it to all of you ladies already. So you are you ladies are already set. And for the other ladies, whoever else would like to be a part, message me as well. I got a, a coupon for you all so you can take advantage of the steep discount that I can offer you. <laughs> okay. I am so excited. Um for everybody, I'm excited for those whom are discovering how to unlock their purpose because we unlocking stuff, okay? Stuff, purpose is being revealed with the Buzzles of Podcast. And we appreciate everybody on here for bringing in your wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Tiff. Thank you, Focus. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, everybody that was listening um, for chiming in on the comments. I appreciate every, I don't think y'all understand. Like, I appreciate everything that everybody does. I appreciate every like. I appreciate every share of the flyers. I appreciate all of that stuff because you don't have to do it, but you do it so freely. Right. And um, when you are a person that truly supports everybody, it feels good to appreciate those for supporting you and what you're doing. So. I truly, truly, I don't think, I don't, I don't think people understand like how excited I get when I be like, oh my God, they shared the fly thing. Like I really do me be mean in my thank you for sharing, right? It's not just, you know, just a, just something to put. I mean it because you don't have to, but you do it so freely. So I thank everybody for supporting Nakia Monet and the Muzzle is Off podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, Y'all know I'm working on some things. I keep talking about it because some things take a lot of money. And um, when it is literally just you, you got to do things in, in, in order of importance. But one of the one of the things I am truly focused on right now is getting a dial in number because I think that it is important to be able to have people call in as well. 
um, because everybody's not going to comment. Everybody's not going to do that. But sometimes you will pick up that good phone and you will be able to call it. So I'm just working on all of the technology that is behind that because it's a lot of technology that goes into place with um, with doing a lot of stuff like that. But um, hopefully I will have all of that in place by January. Um, because I just think that it's, I think it's important. I think it's it's just another layer to add to add onto um, onto the show and add on with what you know what we bring into the good people. Um, yeah, well, we'll definitely be back even um, after after this month uh, because I believe that there is more that we have yet to give, um, and uh, we're going to give it. And I want people to experience all of what you have. Like I want people to know you, and I want to know what you're doing. So Grace, when you come back on the 23rd, we are going to really take a deeper dive into Woman Arise. Don't think I forgot. So thank you for hiding, but ma'am, here we are. Uh, we're going to take a deeper dive into, into the um, Woman Arise and um, focus already though. We're going to be going, we're going we're going to go ahead first next week into all, all things focus. We are all we are going all in, and I want to help people give birth because there's so many levels to this thing. Yes. It's not a thing, it's so many levels. Because what I just heard you say, I felt a long time is all me, but it's also called sponsorship. So we're gonna get you a sponsor to oh, yeah. for the number, and then we can put that right on the stir below right here. Put their put their business, their company there. We ain't by ourselves. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness. Come on. You fullness don't always need yeah. money. You just need the resource and the yes and the ability to negotiate. And that's the power of speaking. So let's speak that into existence. So for those that are business owners and you see this is popping to where it's want to go and you want to advertise, we need a sponsor to buy the number. So you contact us, good lady, right here. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So... With that, we are going to end on this evening. I love you all. I appreciate you all. We have, I, I don't think that if anyone listens to this whole thing, you're you're literally leaving here full. Yes. Full of a wealth of knowledge. And that's how we want to leave everybody. So with that being said, until next week, this is the mother. Look at, oh, okay. Oh, oh, the oh. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Good night, week. everyone. Be safe. Be safe.